questions about transitional justice in Nepal. Um, I still remember in 2015 when I was just in school and when the Constitution Day was implemented, there were widespread protests all around the country. Uh, a lot of people uh, had to sacrifice their lives uh, because they felt that the Constitution did not respect uh, indigenous economy or regional aspirations for different groups. Uh, now that we're trying to make amend the Constitution, make it more acceptable for a wider section of the population, I'm curious why you think so many people sacrifice their lives for the Constitution that we love so much today. And if publishing the Lal Commission, Lal Ayo report, which investigated the use of unjust use of police force during this protest, whether publishing that report is a step towards transitional justice or a more peaceful country in the future. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. It's uh, great to see you here. So I am a Nepali. I am a dual degree candidate studying development economics here at Harvard and MBA at MIT. Uh, my name is Kailash. Uh, I actually first thought of asking a development related climate just but I want to ask you a very personal question. So about a quarter of our GDP comes from remittance. In 15 to 20 years, the country is going to go from age, young population to aged population. We are focusing so much on the infrastructure, right? But what is the point of all that infrastructure, all that money, if all the Nepalis would have left the country and the country is just aged people. So what are, what are two to three industries you are focusing on or what is your exact focus? Election is coming in a few years. What is your exact focus to make sure Nepalis feel they want to stay in Nepal for that deep Nepal you build it? Thank you. Namaste sir, it's an honor to have you here. I asked this question from a personal space as an international student in USA since past three years. I'm a graduate of master's um, degree in, from Kathmandu University and currently I'm pursuing um, my master's degree in Harvard Graduate School of Education. My question to you is that why does Nepal passively accept the innovation and tax that has been given to us by international organizations and others? And why do we never show concern in tax like third world country or poor country when we are much more than that? Or even showing concerns to um, neighboring country's biggest Bollywood cinema which has started to show us as the place for crime. Why do we never challenge these narrations especially when we know that narrations like this has been shaping the perception around Nepalese and Nepal around the world. And I think a lot of students like me here can relate that ever since I've stepped into this country, we, start, we have been grappling against those stereotypes. So my question to you is, as a leader who has been leading this country and caring for its citizen, what would you do to step up and challenge this narration so that we Nepal and we Nepalese can truly stand and be known for the values that we truly hold and we, who we are authentically. Namaste Prime Minister. Uh, my name is Pradhi Kesi and I'm from Kyutan, Nepal. Uh, I have thousands of questions for you, but I want to leave up to one for now. Uh, in the past 15 years, we have had 13 governments, right? it is about 14 months per government. That's very unstable. Um, it seems like we are not even in embryonic stage of democracy, but a pseudo democracy. This, I feel, is one of the fundamental issues of our institution. My main question is, what if there has been any preparation for introducing term limits in our constitution and stability of our government? And if not, why? Because this seems to be a bonding issue of our time. Thank you. Yeah. I got a question. <laughs> uh, the student over here is asking about stereotypes of Nepal um, that are in global media, Bollywood industry here in the United States, um, and looking at also why Nepal does not push back on the narrative of donor aid, do being a donor recipient, um, if, I, if I characterize that well, but how do you change, especially for the youth, you talked about your large youth population, how do you really give hope to the youth that they can see themselves as Nepalese, whether they're living in Nepal or globally differently, 
And then uh, the gentleman over here was asking about also in the Constitution. Um, do you want to quickly summarize that? I'm Tom Limits, uh, because we have seen the similar faces again and again, but with too limited time. Okay. In America? No, term limits. <laughs> Maybe, maybe our IOP colleagues can bring you back to debate some of our American politicians. Um, but I think, I think the student is asking, oftentimes what we do see in Nepal, um, especially in the prime ministership, the ministers, a lot of the political party leaders, they tend to be very similar faces. They tend to be of the same generation. Um, should we be considering, should you be considering term limits or other opportunities for new voices to also leave the country? Yeah. Uh, you are a student of this university? Yeah. <laughs> now I'm doing research. Oh. Uh, what if some youth come here to join this university as a student? Shouldn't they apply for dean, president, or rector? Our professor of the university must apply for an student. <coughs> Some faculty, I think. Similarly, politics is not a joke. There is a sentiment that people say why these, these uh, old faces are being repeated again and again. And we have to see again and again this. Okay. There is competition. This is a democratic system. In marathon, you cannot say me that uh, old guy, Mr. Beer, <laughs> I want golden cup, so you cannot run with me. If you run, then I cannot win. That's not justice. You have to run with me, and if you go ahead, you can get. <laughs> so, that is not the question of uh, age. And for politics, if somebody cannot work like a young man, should that be? Like a young man, yeah. young man, <laughs> and our own. Shouldn't uh, just uh, desire to remain in this post or capture this post. But if somebody can work, I would like to inform you that. Uh, uh, if you are talking about me, then I would like to tell you that uh, 18 hours at least for a day I am walking at. Still I am walking. So, uh, and I have not uh, created any bar for anybody to compete me and compete others also. In our country, there is democracy. Inside my party, there is democracy. Inside in the parliament, there is democracy. Democratically, people can. And in many countries, young people are not uh, giving candidacy also. In our country, young people also are giving candidacy. But in many countries, I see young people are not even registering their candidacy. This is not the question of age. This is the question of working capability, working capacity, and physical and mental stage and strength. That depends on that. And uh, our question was, uh, on Nepal, the, how Nepalese yeah. are seen. Yeah. Uh, stereotype of uh, stereotype of things are running in Nepal. 
that is the difference between the developed and underdeveloped, undeveloped and underdeveloped countries. Because, uh, but uh, I would like to tell you that uh, we are also not so much back, backward, that we are far away, a nation of miles back from the era. That's not true. The same mobile in America, in the UK, in Japan, in China, they use that we do. The same about uh, cars. But we use cheap cars because we have no that much money to buy. So according to thought, we have to take the more. Mm -hmm. Otherwise it will it make it. So we are doing our best to change the situation to change the situation, to drive into a new stage, economically, politically, and we don't want to bring any instability. There, is, there must be a match between stability and progress in politics, in economy, and other areas as well, in society. Sure. This is my opinion. Well, um, I know I, I know we have so many more questions, um, and I wish we had another hour to do this, but I know we are short on time with the Prime Minister. So um, I just wanted to say as we're wrapping up, and Michael, please, um, any, any closing thoughts on your end as well. I just wanted to tell you, Mr. Prime Minister, I think Michael and I will both share with you the Nepali Americans, the Nepali students we have seen here at Harvard, Greater Boston represent such an opportunity for the country. Um, for all of you that are studying Nepal, either for, either because you're from there or you're passionate about the country, it's one of the world's youngest democracies. With that comes a lot of opportunity for hope, optimism, and really thinking through all the tools that you're learning here, whichever school or discipline that you're studying. How do you help connect and lay sound public policies for helping support the path forward as you have laid out today. Um, I think you know all of us that share a love for Nepal want nothing but um, the best for your country, for your people. Um, I take a lot of my hope and optimism from the students, many of you here today, but all of your peers as well all around the world and of course back home in Nepal. They are the future of the country um, and I think there's so much you can do to help Nepal leapfrog as you think through that next generation. So on my personal behalf, but also from the Kennedy School, Michael and all our colleagues, thank you for taking the time. You're so generous that you came up from New York. I know you haven't slept um, as you've made this journey. But thank you for sharing with us your own vision, but also listening to some of the students' points of view, um, which is so important as we think through what it means to be part of a democracy and what accountability looks like. So thank you for modeling that with us today. Okay. The university and energetic students who have so many questions from different angles, I would like to thank them. And I would like to thank the Nepali students who are studying here and they will get knowledge, they will earn knowledge from here and they will back, I believe, in one, uh, their country and uh, they will serve. Uh, and uh, also I would like to uh, wish all the best to all the students of this university and as well as the professors and uh, management. Uh, everybody I would like to thank you very much. Thank you.